Now spare a thought for the poor caveman. He's rarely the subject of positive press. This is the image we tend to have of the Neanderthal, one of a knuckle-dragging hunter-gatherer. He does only the most rugged of tasks, killing mammoths and starting fires, for example. But it turns out this image may be far from the truth, because Neanderthal man may have been much more like this. Well, perhaps not exactly like this, but uh, he'd certainly have been more involved in domestic tasks than we'd first believed. Uh, not quite doing the cleaning, but we certainly hear that he might have been house, more house pride than we first thought. That is the conclusion of archaeologists at the University of Cambridge. Let's speak to one of them now, lead researcher Dr. Colin Shaw from the University of Cambridge. Uh, Colin Shaw, why has Neanderthal man been so misrepresented? Well, the idea is that Neanderthals have a right arm that's much stronger than a left arm. If you're right-handed or I'm right-handed, we have between 4 and 13% asymmetry, meaning the bone and the muscle is about 13% stronger on the dominant side than the non-dominant side. In Neanderthals, it's upward of 50%. So they've been doing something that's been loading that one arm and causing bone adaptation that's much greater on one side, on the right side, than the left side. The predominant theory at this point in time, until we did this research, was that it was due to th spear thrusting. The idea being when you spear thrust, the right arm does on, is on the back of the spear and drives the spear, and the left arm is at the front of the spear, and it is essentially just guiding things. Now, what we did is we, because muscle is directly affecting bone, we measured muscle activity uh, during spear thrusting to see what would happen in a, in a group of males. We did this research over at Penn State. And what we found was that, in actual fact, the front arm, the left arm, is the one that has far more muscle activity. As a result, it's very unlikely that this muscle activity associated with spear thrusting was the cause of this asymmetry. So your logical conclusion was uh, something less menial, more domestic. How did you work that one out? Well, okay, yes, exactly. So the idea is that Neanderthals, well, we know that Neanderthals lived in a cold glacial climate of Europe between 40 and, say, 350, 400,000 years ago. So they needed something more than just their basic physiology to survive. They needed some sort of protection. And the most likely object that they had around them were skins that they had from mammoth and deer and things that they hunted. So what we see in Inuit, other groups that live in the cold, is that they take these skins and they process them. Processing involves a whole lot of scraping of the inside of the skin because you have to remove the soft tissue. This takes a long time. Per skin, it's about eight hours. You need about four to six skins per suit, and everybody needs a new suit each year. So there's certainly an opportunity for Neanderthals, if they're doing this, to cause a lot of strain that's repetitive on the bones and, as a result, have bone adaptation that looks exactly like we see in Neanderthals. Very interesting indeed. Uh, just briefly, so he did still do his fair share of homemaking. I know scientists always get asked when they publish research, how does it add to our understanding of man today or Neanderthal man back then? How does it help sure. us now? Sure, sure. Well, if we view Neanderthals as hunting and aggressive all the time, perhaps that's wrong. Because if spearing was the, re the cause of all this, this massive asymmetry, they would have had to spear as much as tennis players hit the tennis ball. It would have been repetitive and repetitive and repetitive. So as a result, that would obviously suggest that they were hunting almost all the time. Dr. Kosho, I'm afraid yeah, we are right out of time. Love okay. to talk to you more. Thank you so much okay. for helping our understanding of Neanderthal Man. Don't forget, of course, you can get in touch with me on Twitter. I'm at BBC Karen G. Plenty more to come on Impact. Stay with us.